Hi, this is Phil, Dirty Drive Away. So something a little bit different for you today, rather than the uh, usual cleaning videos. So we've reached the end of uh, the 2018 season, um, unfortunately. And I like to take this time to basically do a bit of maintenance on the washer. Uh, I have done other videos in the past on um, you know, what things to do at the end of the season, your connections and that kind of stuff. Um, but basically what I'm doing this year is, this is being completely stripped. Uh, cut a long story short, beginning of the season, uh, the engine developed an oil leak. Nothing too major, but it was right back in, sort of in March, and I was a bit worried that it was going to blow up, because <clears throat> um, it was kind of spraying oil. It wasn't just dripping out somewhere obvious, it was actually spraying oil. Um, if you can imagine, obviously here's the washer right here in my van is where the tank, the water tank is, and it, all, the, all the oil was being kind of misted and sprayed up onto that. Now obviously I couldn't fathom out where it was coming from. Uh, it was definitely engine oil, it wasn't gearbox oil, and it wasn't pump oil. Um, you will notice with uh, jet washes that the oil in the gearbox and the pump doesn't tend to change colour, it always seems to remain quite clear. So you can normally differentiate the difference in the oils. Obviously engine oil will go sort of brownie black over, over time. So anyway, it was spraying oil uh, and I thought it was going to, to sort of give up the ghost on me um, right in the middle of the season and cause me no end of grief. So basically being, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, preempting the situation, I went out and I actually bought a brand new engine for this. Um, you can't really see it, but it is uh, it's tucked away over the back there in my in my man cave. Um, so obviously I've not fitted it yet. Um, so that's going to be basically what I'm going to be doing with this. It's going to have a complete strip, a complete overhaul. Uh, the pump's coming out, the gearbox coming out, the whole lot's coming out. Um, the whole trolley is going to be um, sent away for repowder coating. Uh, it's, it's done me about five years now. This um, uh, this this washer, so it is due for a bit of love. Um, so I'm going to get all the frame recoated, and um, yeah, basically freshen it up. Pumps coming out, pumps having a complete strip, new valves, new pistons, um, new seals. Um, the gearbox that's been apart before. There's nothing really to that. There's only a couple of gears in there, but that obviously have to come out as well. Um, so basically, later on, what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to do videos uh, on the pump, the gearbox, and then eventually, um, it's probably not going to be anytime soon, but I will do a, um, a video on the, the complete strip and rebuild of um, these Briggs and Stratton engines. As you can see, if I can get in, um, they are quite big. Obviously, it's a V-twin engine, so you know if you don't know don't know your way around an engine, it's probably not the best thing to um, try and attempt yourself. But I'm an ex-motorcycle engineer, so I know my way around an engine pretty well. So yeah, we have uh, the big pump and we have the gearbox in there. So basically everything's going to come out. So this video is basically just a brief introduction to what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm not going to show the complete strip down um, of how you actually physically get this out of the, the cradle um, because every jet wash is different. So unless you've actually got one of these or something like the Evolution 3, every kind of jet wash is going to be different. So um, yeah, so basically these can be an absolute bastard to uh, to get out. I've had this out in the past before. It's not an easy task. These things are really heavy. Um, that pump is ridiculous. But if you have got one of these engines, I'll offer you a couple of quick free tips. <clears throat> you will see this jet wash really is made up. <clears throat> excuse me. The, um, you've got the main you've got the main trolley, which obviously the wheels are based um, bolted to. And then you've actually got the um, what they call up like the skid frame, which is this section down here with the the engine, the pump, and everything bolts onto. These this obviously separates, um, and then it's mounted on these um, these rubber um, vibration dampers. Now the best way to work on these, from from the experience that I've had, you'll find that the pump and the gearbox they make to the engine quite tightly. Um, you will probably need to get um, a bit of leverage in, in here to, to, to wiggle this off. And the, the um, you'll see under here, there's um, mounting brackets. 
they are very very close tolerance they're very very tight in there um, and you'll find that even after you've un, undone the um, the bolts on the bottom of the pump this thing still will be mega tight you have to kind of crack the engine bolts off underneath to give it a little bit of wiggle room to be able to get this pump and gearbox off of this engine without physically removing the whole lot um, but you'll find um, it is doable but you'll find things like the unloader valve the inlet strainer they all get in the way when you're trying to do this um, so the easiest method to basically to, to overhaul this is to remove the engine the pump the gearbox complete with the skid so it's all completely you know it's all completely together and then basically disassemble this once you've got the whole lot out of the main the main trolley because um, you will find uh, if I can obviously you've got bolts down here there's only four bolts that hold the engine in there's one of four there um, but you'll find the bolts like these that hold these these cradles in um, they're all very very inaccessible nothing on this is accessible at all um, let's take a little tour under here Let's go digging under here so you will see there is four bolts or nuts under there and there's the same for the engine right at the bloody back so unless you've got little tiny hands um, or some seriously long tools there ain't no way you're going to be getting them out too quickly um, yeah without scraping a few knuckles so you can see these uh, bolts here that hold the pump in they're not too bad but you will find that once you've undone them uh, and you've removed the pump getting all that back in and getting that all aligned without swearing and cursing is going to be your biggest challenge um, because this bracket just wants to flip and move around so the easiest way really is all you've got if you can see these vibration dampers you've got a bolt on each one you've got four of them you've got you know two either side um, once you've undone them and you obviously disconnected your battery cables if you've got electric start like this one has disconnect your battery cables once you've undone them for these four um, bolts up there that whole cradle with the engine the pump the gearbox will come out completely um, the only thing that might get in your way would be something like the unloader valve or your your intakes so i mean if you wanted to you could take these off beforehand um, but you're going to need probably two people to lift this beast out of here so like I say, I'm not going to show the entire strip down of this um, because it could uh, there could be a lot of cursing involved um, and it could take up quite a lot of time. Um, so what I might do, I'll take a few pictures on the way and post them up. But I mean, obviously, just, just take it slowly. Start off your ancillary stuff. So I'll be removing the hose, um, just the basic stuff. You come around this side. Uh, there's not really a lot to it. But you've got all the electric start and the generator mechanism around here. Um, you'll also find if you have got one of these engines, if you've got one of these Evo 2s, Evo 3s, whatever in these frames, you will see that Briggs and Stratton have been very, very kind to you, or not, as the case may be. But they've put the bloody drain plug for the oil right down there. Now that piece you can see on there is not standard. If you've got one, you'll find it's a little square drive. And as soon as you crack that off, you are going to piss oil everywhere. Believe me, been there, done that and I've got the filthy pavement to prove it. For some God knows reason, I mean obviously these engines are designed to go in lawnmowers and stuff, so it could be um, obviously an issue as well with the, with the manufacturing of the trolley. You know, a nice little drain area would, would be nice, but as soon as you crack that off, oil flows in just about every direction you can imagine. It goes off down that hole there, it will piss off down here, it will piss down there, it will go just about everywhere. So a little tip, fit one of these things. They're called a Stahl bus, I think. They're German. Um, you'll need to put a converter on there because obviously the Americans use an MPT thread on the engine um, and they don't make them with MPT. So I think that's a um, it's an MPT to, I don't know, quarter inch BSP converter. Basically, it's a, a quarter, quarter turn quick release drain valve. So you remove that little aluminium cap on there and it comes with a little um, piece of hose and a, it's got a check valve in it. So as soon as you connect up the little hose, the oil will flow into a container of your choice without any mess whatsoever. Absolutely brilliant. I use them on a lot of my bikes because obviously, um, you know, sometimes find the right container or access is very, very limited. But you can see around here, there is quite a lot of oil spatter and, um, and spray. I've got a feeling it is the, the rear crankshaft seal that is leaking, which is behind this um, 
this uh, pull start fan mechanism motor here. Um, I've spoken to the guy who supplied me the engine, who's very knowledgeable in these, and he said it was one of the main causes would be a crankshaft seal. Um, and he said obviously it drips down there, and the cause of the spray would be because there's, um, there's a fan in the back. Obviously, when it's running on full smack, um, the fan's trying to cool the engine down, and it's picking up little tiny droplets of oil from the crankshaft seal, and obviously blowing it through the engine. Um, you can't really see it so much this side. Um, let's take a little mosey around here. But you can see oh, there's oil spatter in there and there's just crap everywhere. There's loads of oil smudges and everything. Yeah, it's basically, you can just see, I don't know if you can pick it up on top of the uh, the gearbox in there, but there is um, oil sitting in that little channel in there. So yeah, it's pretty grim. So right, that's it. I will come back with uh, another part of the video once I've got this all out. I'm going to get it on the bench. I've got some clearing up in here to do first to make some room. Got to move some of this stuff out of the way. Um, none of that stuff's going to move, but yeah, move some of this. Um, get rid of the half built Millennium Falcon. Clear the workbench up so I've got a nice space to work on. And that's it for me. I'll be back soon uh, once I've got this beast out of the cradle. Right, welcome back. I have uh, got the engine out of the cradle. As you can see, it's still on the skid, but the uh, trolley, that's out there, completely stripped. Loads of, uh, loads of parts. So, just thought I'd do a very quick uh, video on this. Basically, I've got to a stage now where I'm gonna be separating the pump gearbox from the engine now from experience let me just see if I can straighten this camera up it's on a cheap Chinese two pound mini tripod how's that that's better right so uh, issue um, you're probably gonna come across at some stage is you may need to get your gearbox or your pump out um, now the gearbox this piece here um, is actually attached to the pump internally all right so you're probably thinking well how do I get this away from this this pump here um, so this gearbox here is actually attached to the pump with four screws internally so to, to take to take this gearbox off from the pump you have to basically break the gearbox in two yes that is a big ball ache um, so when you're taking these apart, this whole section here, your pump and your gearbox will come away from the engine as one piece. So don't try and, um, don't be trying to, to, to break it. Let's move it here. Don't be trying to break this, these two sections away here because it won't happen. If you do, you're gonna end up snapping something. It will break from the engine to the gearbox. You then have to undo all of these screws to separate the, uh, the the pump sorry pump fucking hell the gearbox into to get to the four screws which then hold it to this pump um, now like I said previously um, it is more so on this end on this um, jet wash it, it may be on on yours too but we've got the um, the sort of bracing bracket for the pump down here let's move this back a little bit There goes a better shot. So we've got the bracing um, plate down here, and it's a very, very tight fit. Um, and obviously, you've got your crankshaft in here, which is going to be on a, um, you know, you could have a tapered um, spline. The only way I can uh, explain it without going too engineering. Um, so you can have a shaft in there which goes into the um, into the gearbox. Now, like I said, it's very, very tight. Um, you're gonna, you may be lucky um, that you can try and wiggle this off of the shaft. Um, but the chances are it's going to need a little bit of persuasion um, in the form of a couple of uh, lever bars or some large screwdrivers. Now don't go mental on this because you could end up cracking the, the um, aluminium casing. So you're going to want to go gentle both sides, wiggle, 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 and you'll find that once you've broken it, because you can, if, especially if you're using your washer outside, the shaft that's inside 
um, may get a bit rusty and you may find that you end up um, that rust has built up and therefore it's basically binding your shaft to the inside of the um, the, uh, the gearbox um, so yeah so basically I'm gonna try and if I can do it I'll try and show you how to separate this what I've done um, to give myself a little bit more clearance a little bit more wiggle room is I've actually undone um, the uh, the four main engine retaining bolts there's only four two either side um, so I basically I've un unscrewed them just to give me a little bit of a little bit of wiggle room just to just to release the pressure so I'm gonna get a couple of uh, let's see if my my little mini Jimmy might work let's have a look Let's find a couple of suitable tools. Something nice and wide. So I'm using a small uh, crowbar, Jimmy wrecking bar, and this is a gasket scraper. It's an old thing, um, but it's quite suitable for the job. So let's make sure uh, we can see what we're doing. Let's perhaps pop it around this side. Is that any better? Sorry, the sun's out today, ruining my angles. Right, let's try it there. My hand may get in the way, but you can kind of see what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to gently put it in there, and the same this side, and gently wiggle, wiggle. You may find it'll break free pretty quickly. You can see that the pump will move, and that is on. It's obviously turning on the uh, the crank from the engine. This is being a bugger. This only came apart a little while ago, but as you can see, it gets really, really tight. What well, it's supposed to be. See, now it's moving. Come on, Daddy. Well, this is making me seem like a right James Blunt. It has been off before. I'm gonna pause this and uh, see if I can get it to crack. Right, so I've got it to crack. So it's on its way. It's gonna be a case of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. With it not being in the trolley, it means the skid kind of moves a little bit.
주머니에 박아. What you're trying to do is get the get the keyway out of the shaft. Oh, after some heaving and hoeing. Fucking bingo, it's off. So you can see your spline gets quite rusty, which makes it tight. Don't know if it's gonna go there. Yeah, there you go, look, you can see the, the keyway, the shaft gets a bit rusty. And then obviously, inside your tube that goes into the gearbox so you can see all the oil and crud that's built up because of the leak all right that's it next video will be coming up stripping these two bastards down bye for now